This is the Andrew Lake Podcast, and in this episode, we're talking about second-tier thinking and spiral dynamics. Second tier thinking. Well, this is a delightful, juicy topic we have to discuss today. If this is your first time hearing about spiral dynamics, you've stumbled upon something quite remarkable, and it's really going to open up your conceptual thinking if you can get your head around it. So I'm really excited to be talking about this. Spiral dynamics. This is a model of developmental psychology, pioneered by Claire Graves, further developed by Beck and Cohen in their book Spiral Dynamics. There is a book called Spiral Dynamics. And Spiral Dynamics is where this term second tier thinking comes from. This is where they coined the term second-tier thinking. So, spiral dynamics is a developmental model which lays out waves of psychological development, similar to the Gene Gebser waves of psychological development. Today I won't be going through the descriptions of each wave, I think what I might do instead is link to videos below, which will help you get your head around the different waves and the different stages of psychological development. Here I want to focus our attention on second tier thinking and what it really means to break into second tier thinking, because second tier thinking is the conceptual and intellectual equivalent of breaking through. It's the equivalent of bursting into that higher state of being. It's the mental activity that is involved in getting up into second tier, getting to that higher plane. So, in a nutshell, second tier thinking is simply this. You recognize that there are different waves of development. If you can understand that there are different waves of psychological development, then you're second tier thinking. So if you can understand spiral dynamics, you've got second tier thinking. If you can understand Gene Gebser's waves of psychological development, then you've got second tier thinking. If you've got integral theory thinking, or you can think in an integral way, in such as Ken Wilber's integral theory, then you've got second tier thinking. And these all are really the same thing, they're really the same level of thinking, or they're sa the same kind of thinking, which is comparing paradigms, comparing perspectives, comparing worldviews, comparing entire ways of thinking and waves of psychological development. So, to be clear, what is one wave of psychological development? Well, what is a paradigm? A paradigm is a whole set of beliefs, values, motivations, understandings, explanations, and so on. A wave of psychological development is quite complicated. It expresses itself culturally and physically and behaviorally in lots of different ways. They are broad descriptions of the human condition. And if you can actually go through and learn what the different waves of psychological development are in a model such as spiral dynamics, 
you'll be really struck out by how similar these descriptions are to certain people in your life and certain stages that you've been through in your life. But one of the key components of these waves of psychological development is that each wave enfolds on the previous wave. So you need to have the first before you have the second and the third and the fourth. And each one expands in complexity. And each one has different questions, different processes, different answers to philosophical questions like, who am I? What are emotions? What is philosophy? What is life? What is reality? Each paradigm, each wave, has a different answer to these sort of questions. But you need to have the base. You need to move through them. Each human is born at square one and needs to develop themselves through each one. So usually what happens is we grow up and we go through these changes in psychological development without even knowing that we're changing. And usually we mature into pretty much the average of our culture. Wherever our culture is at, that's where we turn up. That's where we end up. And from there, we can't really go any further unless we recognize that there is such thing as a paradigm shift. So in linear thinking, what you're doing is you're going along and finding new information and you're using that information as you need. Usually linear thinking is very accept and reject. It's very critical of new information. And it's very exclusionary of previous information. And it will adjust its way of thinking in order to just fit the situation that you're in. But if you go along linear thinking long enough, what will happen is you'll start to have categories of thinking, such as lateral thinking, or spectrum thinking, or network thinking, or systems thinking. So these are totally different ways of thinking in and of themselves. They're concepts of thinking. They're conceptual frameworks. And what will happen is if you build up enough concepts, enough ways of thinking, or enough complexities or parameters to your understanding, you'll have to find new ways of categorizing thought. And that's when you get into paradigm comparing. Because comparing paradigms is a whole lot more complicated than just comparing ways of thinking. So second tier thinking doesn't happen until it needs to. It's dependent on the life conditions, the situations and the thoughts that you're having. A good example of a paradigm shift would be, think back when you were a kid to when you were starting to get into movies. Well, you were starting to grow out of the kids' movies. You were starting to get into the more adult-like movies. So that would have been a really exciting time because you would have started to realize that there's better movies. You want to find the next best movie and they're really exciting to you. They're really new and they're really shocking. Maybe you got into war movies. I remember when I was a kid coming into this understanding of seeing the war movies and the gore of war. And when you're stepping into these new experiences, you're having mini paradigm shifts. You have new experiences that you have to explain. You need to account for with your ways of thinking. And perhaps the same thing happened with your music. You were given sort of a stock standard set of music as a kid. And at a certain point, you started to grow into your culture's music. You were exposed to new music and you found new music. And maybe you took that even further. Maybe you were influenced by someone who had really cool music, which was a bit edgy. It was a bit off to the side. It wasn't in the mainstream. Maybe you got into something that was a bit more obscure, and that was the real shit. That was the good shit. You were really opening up to some good music, and that was your paradigm shift into something else. Well, the same thing happens for your life experiences. The same thing happens with the way you think about reality. And second-tier thinking occurs when you've gone through 
so many of these paradigm shifts that you can see what's going on. You don't know you're riding waves until you've gone across waves enough times. We're sort of like a boy bobbing on the waves in the ocean. We're going up and down, up and down. We're going through these waves. But from our point of view, we just think that we're sitting still on top of the water. Everything's moving around us, not we moving around it. But if you're a boy bobbing on the water and you go across enough waves, and those waves are traumatic enough, they're big enough, then you start to see what's going on. Usually when someone has a paradigm shift, they get hit by a wave and it hurts. And they say, well, I don't want to do that again. Leave me out of the paradigm shift game and I'm just going to go back to bobbing on the water on these little waves. But if you can take some of these big waves, you can understand the pattern, you can literally jump off the waves. You can be sitting outside of the paradigms and comparing different paradigms. So because of the complexity of second tier thinking, it's quite rare that individuals really make that step on their own. It's very difficult to get into second tier thinking without a model such as spiral dynamics. It is possible, it is possible, but it's much more likely to make your way there by understanding something as clear as spiral dynamics. Because spiral dynamics points it out to you. It shows you what it is you're actually looking for and gives you a clear conceptual understanding. I remember stumbling into this book, Spiral Dynamics. I think I was exposed to it through one of the self-help or motivational speaker guys that I listened to. And he'd done a book review on it. And I knew I had to read this book because I was really interested in this idea of developmental psychology. And I remember reading this book and being shocked at the descriptions of each wave. Because I could see who in my life was like each wave. And what stage in my life I had been at each stage, each wave. The book also describes how we move through each wave. And I think we can have a whole conversation just on how we move from one wave to another and how a shift in paradigms occurs. Because a paradigm shift is not just that you've found a new experience and you need to include it into your list of explanations, it is that this new experience is so shocking that you have to re-network the whole thing. You need to change your whole outlook, your whole set of beliefs and motivations and values. Usually when new information comes our way or new experiences are exposed to us, we can include them or we can reject them. Most commonly, we just reject them. We downplay them and we don't include them. But if you're a bit more open-minded and you're a bit more into expanding your understanding, then you'll be more prone to including information rather than rejecting information. And if you're including this information, what will happen is a critical mass will build up where you'll have so much information that you can't keep using the principles under which you are operating currently. So your very core principles will change. Your whole direction will change. This can be quite distressing. This is a dramatic effect. This is known as the midlife crisis, or as this is known as the world shock or the perspective shock. In the book Spiral Dynamics, there's actually a process to going through the shock of a paradigm shift. But if you can make it through and you can understand these changes in waves, and you can take the brutality of changing everything that you believe and you think, 
then you come out on the other side with a whole new understanding. You break through into this larger picture. This is when accelerated learning really does start. This is when multi-perspectival thinking starts. This is when you are really more inclusive of people's ideas and worldviews and thoughts. And this is where things really start to open up for you, both experientially as well as conceptually. And I could actually feel it in my brain. I could feel the implications in my thoughts as I read this book, Spiral Dynamics. It's an actual sensation. It was a emotional response coupled with these thoughts, realizing what I had to do because of all these changes in the way I was thinking. And reading the book was inducing a paradigm shift in me. It was following along the words, following along the ideas, and each idea was being hit into my understanding, into my web of beliefs. And as each hit was happening, it was snowballing. It was snowballing until I realized this huge realization, this profound sense of knowing that I had to change the way I was thinking. And it was terrifying because one of the most brutal realizations of coming into understanding is realizing that you've been wrong. You've had it wrong. You've been suffering under this illusion. You've been thinking the wrong way this whole time. And that is a bitter pill to swallow. It is crushing. It is the peak of facing your own problems. It's the peak of facing your own inadequacies. It's like someone's come along and just pointed out what exactly it is you're doing. And it's so simple the way they point it out. It's so clear, it's so basic to them. They can see right through the very things that you're doing. And you've been trying so hard to achieve these certain things. You've been laboring under these thoughts. You've been wanting to do so much, so hard for so long, and someone just comes along and cuts it right out from underneath your very feet. And this is the shock of a paradigm shift. And it's devastating. I don't want to downplay how destructive, how terrifying, and how confronting a paradigm shift is. If you're really going through a paradigm shift, you will understand that it's, it's confronting, it's destructive. But there's only one thing that makes it all worthwhile, and that is the gratitude. The gratitude of understanding. The clarity and the peace of the knowledge and the wisdom that comes from going through a paradigm shift far outweighs any sort of pain that it costs you. If you can make it through, if you can push on through and amalgamate this new information, you will be so grateful. You will be so happy. You'll have an everlasting sense of understanding. This is when understanding really breaks through. This is when understanding really reaches its peak. And it's really the, the start of when you realize that you don't know. Second tier thinking has a component of knowing that you don't know in an authentic way, not in a surface level way. So if linear thinking is thinking in a string, which is one piece of string going along, and network thinking is thinking in a web, which is in a, like a spider web, which is like a network, and you've got multiple connections with your string, then second tier thinking is knowing that there's multiple spider webs. The person who has only network thinking would 
compare strands, different strands of their network to each other. And they'd say this strand is good or bad, or this strand is like this, this strand is like this. And they come up with different descriptions of each strand. Whereas second tier thinking knows that each strand is defined within its web. So it can compare entire webs. It can compare entire networks, entire spectrum thinkings, entire systems thinkings. And that's much more complex than just one of those lower order forms of thinking. Now, is there a distinction that is absolutely obvious between these three? So at the moment, we're talking about linear thinking, network thinking, and second tier thinking. These are really just illustrations for the different grades in complexity of thinking, because linear thinking just compares single ideas. Network thinking compares concepts and processes and more complicated things, whereas second tier thinking compares entire spectrums, entire paradigms, entire, network, entire networks. So on this scale, you'd think that there would be different gradients, there would be different levels of complexity. And there are, some second tier thinking is more complex and more advanced than other second tier thinking, just as some linear thinking is more complex than other linear thinking. So if we spread out our span, our huge extremes of one end super mega second tier integral thinking on one end, and on the other end we have just plain ABC linear thinking, we can divide it into hundreds or thousands or many different gradients of complexity. So you might ask, in that illustration, is second tier thinking distinctly different? Is the step between network thinking over into second tier thinking really that dramatic? Is it just not a small step in the process of becoming more complicated in our thinking? And I can see from one point of view that that's true, it is just one step. Complexity moves in small gradations, in small steps. But from my own personal experience, the step into second tier thinking is monumental. It is absolutely shattering. It's experientially dramatic. It's personal. It's an opening up of the whole world. It's an opening up of how things work, of explanations. And when you start to see the different comparisons between paradigms, you really start to see that there's so much to learn. You start to see how ignorant you were, how lost you were. And the contrast is staggering. Graves called the step into second tier thinking a monumental leap in understanding. Those were his words. If you can get your head around it, it really does open things up. So what is the prescription? Let's say you're now agreeing with me and you can have a bit of an idea of what second tier thinking is like. And you're on board with it and you're saying, well, okay, what do I do? How do I get there? What do I need to enact? What are the behavioral responses to this information? Well, your first step would be understanding spiral dynamics. So you would need to know the descriptions of each wave of development. So this would be the equivalent of knowing the descriptions of each wave of development in the Gene Gebser model of development. So the difference between spiral dynamics and the Gene Gebser model is that really only in how many ways we slice it, how many gradations we put in. So Gene Gebser puts in six different waves of development. 
whereas Spiral Dynamics has eight or nine different grades in its waves of development. But you could study both, you could learn both, and you'd have to have a bit more of an understanding of how they overlap and where they blur the line. But what you want is to understand that each wave is a, is a complex web. It's a totally different way of thinking, which is distinctly different from each one. And you need to recognize them as a conceptual understanding. And you also need to understand them in relation to you. You need to know where you are at. You need to recognize your ways of thinking. So you can write out your values, your beliefs, your explanations. But being able to articulate them will not be as complex and as clear as if you would be if you had a structure or a map of something like spiral dynamics. Another step you can take towards becoming more complex in your thinking and moving towards second tier thinking is to learn about other perspectives. So you learn information, and you take in new information, which is very different to what you are currently operating under. So you would have to find out about things that are not usual to you. Learn about different cultures. If you go and live in a different city, or a different country, or a different culture, you're going to have a different web and a different way of operating enforced on you and that will be in a way a paradigm shift you could listen to people talking about things that are different to what you're normally used to you could read books about things that you're not used to reading history books reading literature reading fiction that you're not used to or watching movies that you're not used to that would be an easy step these are all quite small gradations. These are small steps in the right direction. Anything that's giving you a new experience is going to be adding to your experiences. Any conversation you have with someone who thinks differently to you is a step towards opening you up towards second tier thinking. So openness is key to moving towards second tier thinking. Understanding complexity is key towards moving towards second-tier thinking. But really, the most fast-track, shortcut way is to study the system itself. It's to study the model that gives you a clear path, a clear description from one end to the other. And what's in it for you? What do you gain? What is the value of a greater understanding? What is the value of accelerated learning? What is the value of being open to more experiences? What's the value of being more complex in your explanations and understandings? Well, this system cuts at your root principles. It cuts to the core of the issue, which is, what are you doing with your life? This gets down to the heart of the processes that you are playing out. It's quite rude to learn that you are a cultural meme. Do ideas have you? Do motivations have you? Do your goals own you? These are the sort of questions that second tier thinking can answer. And when we talk about things like being clear on our values, clear on our beliefs, and clear in what it is that we want in life, second tier thinking goes a long way at cutting straight to the core issue of these questions. I should also mention integral theory is 
inclusive of these models of second tier thinking of spiral dynamics and Gene Gibser. Integral theory is a little bit different to second tier thinking in and of itself because integral theory really goes beyond second tier thinking. But second tier thinking is very important. It's vital to the integral way of thinking. There's no way you're going to be integral if you don't have second tier thinking. There's no such thing as integral without second tier thinking. So don't burden yourself with trying to go integral just yet. And just concentrate on understanding waves of development, systems thinking, spectrum thinking, network thinking, linear thinking, lateral thinking, critical thinking, and second tier thinking. We can build all these up into a more complex picture. If you're feeling a bit confused or overwhelmed by all this information, well then you know that's a good thing because that means we're feeding you lots of information and you're struggling to make sense of it. This means your paradigm is expanding. You're opening up to new waves. This very conversation, this very thing that we're talking about right now is linear. In a sense, all conversations are linear. All the information I'm feeding you is one bit after another. And it's up to you to be making sense of each bit. And if you've been listening along to all these conversations and you've been taking in the majority of it, then you're getting geared up and ready to step into second tier thinking. You're being primed for second tier thinking. Whereas if you have been confused, well, you've most likely tuned out if you've been confused or I've been unable to explain the complexities well enough. If it's too overwhelming for you and none of it is sinking in, then you'll just stop listening. You'll be staying at those lower waves. You won't be building the momentum towards complexity. It takes a momentum to get towards second tier thinking. And I think back to when I was first learning about integral theory, and I realized that I had been learning about smaller systems, smaller waves, and smaller perspectives. And I had learned quite a few of them. I had learned about each of them. And that had made me ready to put them all together, to put them into pieces of the puzzle. And that's the only way I can really backtrack and re-step my track, is by going over these smaller parts again to see how they fit together. So trust that a big shift is coming. Keep listening along. Keep listening to new information finding new information, new people talking, things that challenge your beliefs, things that challenge your understandings. There are things that step towards a paradigm shift more than others. If it's something that you already agree in, something that you already agree with or that's already easily explainable, then it's not effective in shaking up your paradigm. The more hard it is for you to believe something is the more shifting it is of your paradigm. So if you can take the very thing that is the hardest thing for you to believe and explain that into your world perspective, you will be taking great gains in your paradigm shift. So this would be like a paradigm rep. So if you go to the gym and you're lifting weights, one rep is up and down. So this is your conceptual rep. It's your conceptual exercise, which is taking something which is so far outlandish, the most obscure, weird, definitely unable to be true. Like you can't even, there's no way that it would be true and really look at it. And really see, now how do I explain what's going on here? 
how do I include this in my perspective? And I'm talking anything. You can use anything for this. You can use events. You can use conspiracy theories. You can use outlandish beliefs. You can use dogmatic beliefs, religious beliefs. You might not be very religious. You might be absolutely sure that religion is not true. You might be absolutely 100% correct in thinking that God doesn't exist. And now, notice the reaction. Notice what's happening. There's a defense happening. Because your idea of what God is, is solidified in your perspective. When I use this word God, you have a bunch of things come to mind and those things are embedded in your structure of understanding. They're embedded in your psychology. So for you to change your definition of God or to change your explanation of this word God, you're going to have to restructure your brain, restructure your psychology, change your thoughts. And to do that, you have to do reps. If you want to build muscle, you've got to lift weights. If you want to build psychology, you have to lift conceptual weights. You have to change your thinking. When I hear myself say something like, you have to change your thinking, immediately what comes to mind is, first of all, it is a cliche. Lots of people are selling this idea of, you need to change your thinking. Especially if you want to get rich and make a lot of money. If you want to do something better to improve your life, you have to change your thinking. How many times have we heard that before? Change your mindset. Mindset coach. And really all that is a load of bullshit. Because there's no point in changing your thinking unless you get something out of it. But this is exactly why I'm trying to get you to understand the importance of second-tier thinking, paradigm shifts, and complexifying your thoughts, is because there is an experiential gain to be made from it. All this stuff is just thoughts. It's all theory of mind. It's all concepts. It's all words. It's all rationality and stories inside your head. This is just a long way around of me trying to get to your experience. Because we can do a whole conversation on the philosophy of experience or the concept of experience. Because experience is completely different to thought. Second tier thinking is just the doorway into your experience. Because remember our goal. What is our goal really? Our goal is not to make more money. Our goal is not to improve our thinking. Who cares about our thinking? It's our experience. We want to feel a certain way. Don't you want to feel better? Don't you want to feel alive? Don't you want to feel magical in the world? Don't you want to look out the window and feel awe? Don't you want to know that you have an intelligence which we, which we can manipulate and change so adaptively that everything around you becomes free? Don't we want to be free? What about that? That's a good one. How about freeing your mind? Where does that phrase come from? Let me free your mind. Do you notice what happens in the Matrix movie? I'm sure you've seen this movie. What happens in the Matrix movie? This is the perfect example of a paradigm shift. You've spent your whole life living in the Matrix. And then you wake up. You burst through. That scene where Neo is bursting out of his cocoon, that is bursting into second tier thinking. That is the breakthrough point. And what happens? What happens when he breaks through? The first thing he does is he looks around and he sees that everyone else is stuck in their cocoons. It's so distressing and there's nothing he can do about it. He can't help anyone. 
And then just before he's come to terms with this, the machine comes along and sucks him out and shoots him back down into the water. And then you realize the next few scenes is Morpheus and Neo training themselves to free their mind, free Neo's mind. This is what Morpheus says to Neo, I'm trying to free your mind. And how does he do that? What is he doing to do that? Well, he's putting him in different scenes. First of all, he's in the white scene and there's nothing all around. So he goes back to square one, he goes back to zero, and then he's in the desert. And then he's in this Kung Fu sparring place. And then he's in a city on top of a building. He's moving him in and out of perspectives. He's moving him in and out of paradigms. He's being multi-perspectival. And the significance of this movie is actually real. This is why it's hit such a nerve with everyone in our culture. And there's a whole depth of implications of what we can say about the Matrix. It's a beautiful expression of these dynamics and of these ways of thinking. But you have to realize that this is real. You have to notice that this is second tier thinking. And there are actual psychological models that exist to explain this. People have done this before. There is a whole generation of people who are living with second tier thinking. There are people who understand second tier thinking and they exist it and they operate it from it and their sense of reality and their sense of being is from it. Their whole experience of reality is totally different to yours. Hopefully I can induce a sort of interest into another way of thinking by describing to you what it's like. Oh my God, there's no going back. Once you break through, <laughs> you're just going to be sitting in the cocoon saying, man, what is going on? We've got to get everybody up here. We've got to get everybody through. What can we do? How do we break through? How do I explain it to you? What can I do to explain it to everyone? And I know you're not going to accept it. You're not going to want it. You're not going to want to hear about it. None of it's going to take. You're going to explain it away. It's going to be wrong to you. You're just going to forget about it. And this is the frustration of being at second tier and trying to get other people to understand just what the fuck is going on. I can understand why people sound so crazy. Why do people get so emotional about this? It really hits a nerve. Ah, oh. so spiral dynamics, second tier thinking, and continue on in your linear thinking. I will be putting links in the description of this video so that you can follow to the next step of research. This is just an introduction. So thanks very much for tuning in. Hopefully I've whet your appetite. My name is Andrew, and we'll be back soon with more. Have a beautiful day. Have a wonderful day. Don't mean to get so heavy. Really, just enjoy your day. We'll be back soon. Thanks very much.